Hi friends, it's Ashley. In today's tutorial, we are going to turn this really big panel into a pumpkin. So I envisioned this and I know that this is going to be beautiful. Like I know it deep down. I know that this pumpkin is going to be the best pumpkin that I've made yet. And I'm so ready to do this. I'm so ready to teach you all this. So my plan is I went and I picked up a real pumpkin stem from the store. They're always just laying around outside the pumpkin bins. So I picked this up. And so I'm going to give this to my mom. I know my mom is going to want this so bad. <laughs> so... Um, this is the Jacob's Ladder, but it's different. So being that this is going to be a big pumpkin, um, so I had this idea. I was like, how can I make the chains bigger? You know, I didn't want, you know, a small chain link for, you know, a big pumpkin. So, um, I just, I practiced and practiced and then it hit me and I was like, hold up. I can use single crochets instead of chains and it worked so um, if you look closely um, this Jacob's ladder it is a lot it's a lot thicker it's a lot bigger let me show you all I'm gonna zoom in here so if you look these are made with extended single crochets. So the whole thing is made with single crochets. So all of these right here, these are all just regular single crochets. And then when you get to the chain or the, the stitch to make the, um, the chain link, we will just make extended single crochets. It looks really nice. I really like it. I, I'm really excited about this. So, and then I thought, okay, so get a realistic pumpkin stem and incorporate this sunflower with it. Like, just, just think about it. Just picture it. So here's the middle and then have the sunflower on it. Like, this is going to be beautiful. And then if you really, really want to get creative. So I had went to, um, the local uh, nature preserve. It's like right around the corner from me. And um, so it's got the woods and you can, you know, walk trails and stuff. So I found a bunch of the older acorns, which are still really, really neat. But then I found this one. Like, isn't this one neat? Okay, so this one here, this one here, if I can get that to focus in, so this one must have just dropped from the ground. It's still like bright and shiny. Like, look how beautiful. So if you want to get real creative, get you a hot glue gun and then glue on acorns with it too. So, and you know, I cannot find my glue gun. I have looked and looked, which I got like tons of, of yarn and arts and crafts stuff that I've just got like piled up in a closet and then that closet is like too full like I need my own storage like for all my stuff and, but I cannot find it it's driving me crazy I really don't want to buy a new one but um so really for this project okay if you have a hot glue gun that would be best because that's what I would use if I could find mine I would totally just hot glue the stem and then what I'm going to do, like I'm going to stuff the pumpkin and then, so I'd already like crinkled this up. I'm going to stick this inside the pumpkin. So that's my plan. I'm going to stick the stem inside the pumpkin and have the flower sticking out and then, you know, cinch it all the way. Um, or you can just you know, usually these pop off, you know, so, or you could just pop it off and hot glue it on, you know, totally whatever you want to do. 
and then I was thinking, um, I was almost kind of wondering uh, when I was thinking, what can I do for a stem? What can I do for a stem? I want this to look like um, really, really nice, but also have a realistic feel to it too. So um, I was thinking, well, the stem, or if you want, um, you could always use a pine cone for a stem. Like, like how I'm going to stick this in the pumpkin and then uh, cinch it closed around the top. You could do the same thing with a pine cone. You could use a pine cone as, as a topper, as a stem. You know, just, you know, try something new, you know, um, creative or whatever. Um, so you do whatever you want to do, but this is going to be fun. I promise this, this is fun. So it's all single crochets and, um, it's easy. I promise. Uh, I will show you, and this is a lot easier than what it looks. So what we will do is we will chain out the amount of chains for this pumpkin. And then we will, we will single crochet all the way across for the first row. And then the second row, we will begin our chain links. And what we will do is one row, there's two single crochets and then the chain link, and then 10 single crochets, and then the chain link, 10 single crochets, 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 chain link, and then eight single crochets. You could do five single crochets and then five single crochets. You could do that if you want, but when, when I close this and cinch it and sew the side together, I really wanted that seam to kind of be hidden. So I was thinking, if I just have the two single crochets and then this, it'll kind of be kind of tucked, you know, kind of behind this chain link. So I'm hoping that my idea works out. Um, so it's up to you. Um, if you want to have, you know, five on one end and five on one end, or like, or like me, two and then eight. It's totally up to you. So what we will do is I will teach you a small, well, probably this, about this big of a swatch from here to here. And we'll have eight at the end and then the chain link and then 10, chain link, 10, chain link, 10, chain link, and then two. So that's what we'll do. So if you want to make this smaller or bigger, just remember, we're going to have 10 single crochets in between one stitch that creates the chain link and then 10, 10 in between and then one and then one and then one and however many you want um, on each, each side. Okay, so uh, let's go over the supplies. So this yarn here, this is a medium four weight yarn. It is acrylic yarn. This is super saver. So I picked this up at Walmart. It's um, super saver pumpkin. So it is in the color pumpkin. And so um, I pretty much used up almost the whole row. So this is how much I have left. And, and, and believe it or not, this... I mean, it's, this is kind of quite a bit, but if you look, I was using the inside strand um, instead of the outside. That way I could, it'll just pull and pull and it'll lessen and I don't have to worry about the roll just rolling around everywhere. So um, I've pretty much used up this whole row. So in order to make this whole pumpkin, you'll just need one whole roll of it. I did 
um, go and pick up another roll, but it's a different lot number, so the color is different. So you can visibly see that this row is much lighter than this row. And I hate when that happens, but it's just the way it is. Like they had, that's why they have lot numbers. Um, so these are two different lot numbers. Um, luckily I didn't need more than one row to make it. Um, but it is red heart super saver. It has 364 yards in it. It's considered two balls. And it is the color pumpkin. So these both are the same, same color and, and stuff, but, but yet uh, this one's much lighter. And you know what? Okay, so I could not find this color. So I went to two Walmarts. On the second Walmart, I was like, this one doesn't have it either but then I saw it up at the top at the very tip top and um, so I had to get a tall person to get it for me and I was like yes it's it's pumpkin it's 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 what I needed and then I brought it home and I was like oh man like it's it's a totally different lot number and sometimes with solids that doesn't matter but I bet you this one, I bet you this rose old because it's so faded. You know, it's it's so light. So, oh well, it happens. Um, but luckily you only need one row for this. So that's the cool part. You only need one row. Um, and we are going to use um, a five millimeter crochet hook. This doesn't have like the numbers on it or anything. Um, it came like that, so, but this is a five. This is a five millimeter crochet hook. So we'll need our crochet hook and we'll need our scissors. Um, I can't find my glue gun, so I have to use um, super glue. And, and also um, a yarn needle. So we are going to need a yarn needle so at Walmart, I was looking in their uh, sewing section um, with their sewing needles and, you know, with sewing machines and stuff. And I found this. This was only two bucks. It was two bucks. And it says that it's for heavy thread. Use with yarn or heavy thread. And when you read it, it um, I think... I think this is um, for doll making. Um, so when uh, this is originally for doll making, doll needles. So it's Hello Hobby. You get five needles. And this should work good because this is tall. So it has, this is the, the bigger one. So it's, that's how tall it is compared to the crochet hook. So this should work good um, uh, versus, you know, a small one. A small one, I think, would be uh, too hard because this pumpkin is going to be pretty big. So if you want to go pick this up, it was two, it was uh, maybe a little over two bucks, uh, $2 and change. I mean, it's Hello Hobby Doll Needles. Pretty neat. And what I'm going to do is to make sure I get this thread through this needle, I'm going to take, this is just a really thin piece of decorative wire. It bends really easily. I got it from Dollar Tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold a little piece in half and then And twist and then I'm going to clip it. I really don't want to use that scissors a lot. I want to keep these new scissors I got looking nice so I'm just going to clip it and I'm going to use this 
to thread my yarn needle. So let me see, let me see if I can show you. I'm just going to take this yarn in. I'm going to stick that, that through that, that wire that I just created. And it's going to kind of squash it up a bit. But I'm going to stick it through this needle. And there we go. But that wire really comes in handy for me. Uh, that's what I always like to use. Um, so we will be using the big uh, yarn needle that comes out of this pack here. That's my plan. And then um, we're going to use a real pumpkin stem. And this came, I guess it came off one of those real big fat pumpkins. So that works. I think that will look really, really good. And I'm going to use this flower. Like I can picture this already. This is going to look fantastic. Like sitting on my mom's porch outside her door. Or even inside. Like this is going to be, this is going to be beautiful. And then if you want, um, glue on some real acorns like that will look beautiful or um smaller pine cones with maybe some fake flowers or something this is going to be beautiful for sure so you will need all of these so the hook the yarn needle your scissors a uh, hot glue gun or super glue a stem if you want to use a flower or whatever decorations and um, the yarn and and don't forget you will also need your polyfill stuffing and this here this is huge this is 20 ounces so I picked this up at Walmart for uh, five dollars and I think 69 cents and this is like plum full. like this is like so packed full. So you can also pick up a big thing of this for $5.69 at Walmart. And um, so we're going to be using um, quite a bit of this stuffing because this pumpkin is going to be big. So I don't know if you watched my last pumpkin video, but my last pumpkin video, I made a it's like a country style boho pumpkin. Let me get it. Um, so, um, my last video, I taught how to make uh, this pumpkin here. Like how cute. It's got the cinnamon stick stem. And it's got the jute rope top. And it's the star stitch. And it's got the beaded tassel. So, how cute. So, this pumpkin is going to be much bigger than this one. So this one was 15 inches. Um, uh, uh, the panels worked up uh, 15 inches uh, for, for the width, for the roundness. And this one here is 23 inches. So from here to here, 23 inches. So it will be 23 inches around. And then from here to here, let's see, um, 10 inches. So uh, from, here's a ruler. So from here to here, it's exactly 10 inches. And then across is 23 inches all the way. So this pumpkin is going to be like this it's going to be you know a, a little bit bigger uh, than this one and also another great tip that i might actually do in this video is um i made this pumpkin and i don't know if you've seen the short uh video but the short video it was more like this so I stuffed the stem too um, because I thought it I was like, oh, it looks like a witch's hat. Um, but I can actually squish it 
and make it more, you know, uh, more compact instead of flat, which actually I think that looks better. So what I did was I used a small amount of polyfill. So I put the polyfill in it and I worked it around the stuff around the edges and I left the middle empty. And then I took yarn. I took my old yarn scraps and I stuffed and I stuffed and stuffed and then I cinched it a little and then I single crocheted going all the way around and going up to make the stem and then I stuffed it some more and I stuffed I stuffed it pretty full and I stuffed the stem also with yarn and I really I, I'll tell you right now uh, stuffing it with yarn I think is the best because this you know this is full of polyfill but it's it's very lightweight now this has weight to it this isn't going to be easily blown over you know um, I, I like it with the yarn because it gives it weight and um, I, I just I wish you all could feel it I wish you all could just feel this um uh, versus this um this just feels right this just feels with the yarn in it it just feels better you know it, it just doesn't feel just so fluffy and light it actually feels full and um it's got heaviness to it um so if you got um say like all this yarn i got left over i could use this and stuff the pumpkin um which will give it more of that fullness and that weight to it but if you got um chenille yarn or velvet yarn that is what i think really really helped to make this feel the way it feels and i can also mold it i can i can you know make it like that or I can squish it down and it's because of the yarn that's inside of it you couldn't do that with polyfill or I can make it flat you see so isn't that neat and it only has a little bit of polyfill just around the edge that whole middle and that whole top and then that stem is all yarn and it's mixed with um, acrylic yarn and um, uh, that that chenille velvet yarn so it's got a lot of the chenille velvet yarn scraps in it so what I do like when I make these projects I save my yarn ends and so I've been saving this for a year all my little yarn end scraps and stuff from all my projects and I saved it because I thought well what if I run out of polyfill I could just use this and oh my gosh putting just a little bit of this in that pumpkin man like I wish I would have been doing that a long time ago so you can always do that just take your yarn and stuff it I promise you you will be commenting and you will say ashley oh my gosh like i cannot believe that it, it you will notice a huge difference i promise so uh, uh make sure you have lots of polyfill or lots of yarn um and actually you don't even need that much yarn for something like this but um like i said this is gonna be a pretty good size pumpkin so make sure you've got uh, plenty of stuffing, whatever it is, just make sure you got plenty of that too. So to make this pumpkin, we will be working in multiples of 11. So we will make 11 chains, 11 chains, 11 chains, and all the way until the end, and then at the end we will add one chain and um so for this large pumpkin 
you will need 77 chains plus one chain for your turning chain. And I am going to demonstrate about half that size. So I will be making 33 chains plus one chain. And to begin, we will need a, a long yarn tail uh, to make our swells uh, and bulges for our pumpkin. So we will pinch the end of our yarn and we will take it to our elbow. And we will do this. Um, I want to do this three times uh, just in case. I want to make sure that I have a very long um, yarn end. Um, that way I have enough. So once you do that, we will make our slip knot. I'm just going to put the yarn in on this side. And my working yarn on this side. So I will be chaining 33 plus 1, but you will need to chain 77 plus 1. But just remember, if you want to make this larger or smaller, just make it in multiples of 11. So I have 33, now we'll add one more, and you can either work into the middle of your chain like that, or you can turn it and work into these, these, uh, these uh, back bumps here, and you'll see these, these back bumps that stick out behind the chain so we will be making single crochets so we will go into the second chain from our hook so I'm just going to turn mine to the back here and find that back bump and then I will make one single crochet And in this completed stitch here, my first completed stitch, I am going to place a stitch marker here. So what I'm going to use is I cut a bunch of, um, this is about four to five inches of a yarn scrap. And I'm just going to pinch it. And then pinch it here. I'm just going to grab that by yarning over. I'm just going to pull that through. And that way I know if I get confused at all, if I do this in the first stitch of every row, then this will help me to count my rows better. This will help me to find my last stitch when we go back around. So that will help. So if you see these, these, uh, back bumps here. That's what I'm going to go into, these, these back bumps. I'm just going to make one single crochet all the way across until the very last chain.
So continue to do that and I will meet you back at the very end. So I'm at the very end of row one. I just made my last single crochet. So each turning chain will always be one. So we will always chain one and turn. And each row will be single crochets. And uh, believe it or not, uh, these uh, Jacob Jacob's ladder braids are going to be uh, pretty easy. And I'm going to show you um, how to do it. So in this very first chain here, so you'll see those uh, this chain here. It's our first chain. So um, the way that I did this pattern, and you can do it differently if you want. Um, you don't have to do it exactly the way I do it, but I am going to do this. Uh, this is going to be identical to the regular Jacob's Ladder. It's just the chains for the braids are going to be extended single crochets instead of chains, but you'll see it, there's not much of a difference at all. So what we will do is we will go into this very first chain and we will make one single crochet. In the next chain here, we will make one single crochet. In the third chain, this very next chain, the third one, we are going to begin our braid. So what we will do is we will go into that chain just like a single crochet. So we will go up and we will yarn over. We're going to grab that yarn and pull it through the stitch just like a single crochet. And instead of yarning over and pulling through two, You're going to yarn over and only pull through one. And that creates a nice little chain here. We're just going to pinch this. The easiest way to do this is for you to pinch that chain. We, are, we will go back into this chain in just a moment. So we're going to pinch that chain. Now we're going to go up. And we're going to make a single crochet. So we'll pull through both those lo loops like a single crochet. We just completed one extended single crochet. We will do this a total of 10 times, so nine more times. But in order to make the second extended single crochet, you need to go back into that chain that we were pinching. So we're going to go into the middle of it where you have, there's a total of three bars that make the, that part of the, the extended single crochet. And we're going to go through the middle. So it looks like there's only two, but there's three. So we're going to go into the middle of it, but we're going to make sure that we go in like that where we, we see one bar and two bars. So now we're going to go up, we're going to yarn over, and we're going to make another extended single crochet. So we're going to grab that yarn, we're going to pull it through that chain, and up. So we're going to pinch that. We're going to chain one. That's going to be our next, that's going to be our next chain that we go into. I need to get this to focus. There we go. So we chained one. So now we're going to pinch this. We're going to go back into this. We're going to go up and then complete the single crochet. So now we're going to go into this chain that we were pinching. 
we're going to go up and pull that through. Just pinch that, hold that. Go up, pull through one. We made that chain, go up and pinch that. Go up and pull through two, like a single crochet. So now we've made three. So now I'm going to go back into that chain I was pinching. If you spread it, you'll see it has those two bars like a chain. And we're just going to repeat this. And you'll see we have one, two, and three. So we're working on our fourth one now. I'm just going to pinch that. I'm going to pull through one. I'm going to pinch that new chain and then I'm going to yarn over and make that single crochet. And that's all we have to do. And we have to do this a total of 10 times. So we've made four. So we have one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go into that that chain. So if you look that hole right there, that was our third chain. So one single crochet, one single crochet, that third chain is where we started our braid so if you want to count back so you have this hole here that's that third stitch that we worked into for row two and then we count one two three four and that is the chain I'm going to work my fifth extended single crochet in so I'm going to go into the middle of that pull it up pull through one and then yarn over pull through two and that's five so one two three four five so I need five more so I'm just gonna go into that Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, pinch that chain you just made, yarn over, pull through two for a single crochet. And it's six. And pull through one loop and then pull through two. That's seven. And we go back into that chain and repeat. Pull through one. So when I pull through one, that's my new chain there that I pinch. And then complete the single crochet. So that's eight. Back into that chain I was pinching. Pull through one. There's our new chain. We're going to pinch that. Yarn over. Pull through two. One more. Pull through one. That's my new chain. Pinch that. Yarn over. And make that single crochet. So now we have 10. So that's what we need. We need a total of stacked extended single crochets. Now that third chain that we began in, we're going to go back into that third chain. So we prepared a crochet. So now we're going to dip back into that third chain that we began. And we're going to make one extended single crochet. So we're going to yarn over, 
go through that stitch and pull that up. We're just going to tilt this this way to make it easier. So we see our two loops here, and we are going to make it one extended single crochet. So that means we're going to yarn over and pull through one. See, we got that chain there that we pinch. And now we yarn over and pull through two loops. So now we are finished with our braid. So what we will do from here on out is we will make 10 single crochets and then a braid. And then 10 single crochets and then a braid. So the next 10 chains will be just one regular single crochet. So this next chain here, I will go in and make one single crochet. And I will repeat that nine more times in the next nine stitches. So the next chain, one single crochet. I'm gonna have to pull some more yarn slack here. So that's two single crochets. So just remember this count. So we have one single crochet, one single crochet. We need eight more. So we'll go into the next chain and make a single crochet. That's three. Into the next chain, make one single crochet. That's four. We're gonna go into the next chain and make one single crochet. That's five. We're gonna go into the next single crochet. I mean the next chain, make one single crochet, that's six. The next one, that's seven. The next one, that's eight. The next one, that's nine. And then the next chain, that's ten. I'm going to go back and count these. So when you go back, you'll have two single crochets. And then in that third chain, you'll have, let me get this to focus for you. You'll have all of this in that one chain. So all of this is counts as one. So in that third chain, we made the stacked 10 extended single crochets. And then we went back into that same, that same third chain. And we made one extended single crochet all in that one chain. So you see this, this one, that tall one here? looks like two chains on top of each other that is that extended single crochet in that third chain and then we have a regular single crochets pulled all the way down and we need 10 so we got one two one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's good. Now our next chain is going to be like that third chain. We're going to make another, we're going to make another braid. So in this next, this next one right here, that 11th one, and that's why our multiple is 11. So we do 10 single crochets, and then that 11th chain is the braid. So we're gonna go into this next chain. We're gonna go up, pull that up. Pull through one, created a chain, pinch that chain, 
yarn over, pull through two, and that's one. Go back into that chain we created that we pinched. We're going to do it again. Pull it up. Pull through one, created a chain, pinch it, yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's two extended single crochets. Go back into that chain that we made and pinched, and yarn over, pull up one loop, yarn over, pull through one, made a chain, pinch it, yarn over, pull through two loops. We're just going to keep doing this till we make ten. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one, made that chain. I'm going to pinch it, yarn over, pull through two loops. Go back into that, that chain. I'm trying to get right in the center of that chain. And I have both bars there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop. Pinch that chain. Yarn over, pull through two loops. So, so far, I have made one, two, three, four, and five. So I need five more. So that chain right there, one, two, three, four, five. Those look like chains. Can you see? One chain, two chain, three, four, and five chains. And we'll go into and this is not wanting to stay focused for some reason. So in that fifth chain, that last chain right there. I'm going to go in, do the same thing. I pulled up a loop, got two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through one. I made that chain, I'm going to pinch it. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. Go back into that chain that I pinched and repeat. Yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. I have to get more yarn slack. So I have the two loops, I pulled up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, I made that chain, pinch it, yarn over, pull through two. And let's see, I need ten of these. So here's that, that hole of that chain. There's that chain one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. I have nine. I need one more. So I go back into that chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So I have a total of 10 extended single crochets. So what do we do next? After we have that stacked 10 extended single crochets, we go back down into that same chain we began. We're going to go back into that. So we're going to dip down back into that chain. And we're going to make one extended 
single crochet. So we yarn over, pull it through, and pull up a loop. We have two loops. We're just going to yarn over, pull through one loop. We created that chain. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And now we repeat. So the next 10 chains will get one single crochet each. So beginning in the very next chain, one single crochet. Next chain, one single crochet. Next chain, one single crochet. And that's three so far. It's four. That's five. That's six. Seven. Eight. nine and ten so we got our ten single crochets that next chain is going to be a braid so I'm going to go in and we'll pull up a loop hold on one sec I have to get plenty of yarn slack So now I pull through one, and I created that chain, so I want to pinch it, and I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. So that's my first extended single crochet, so I go back into that chain, and do it again. Yarn over, pull through one. Pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into the, the pinched chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Back into that pinched chain, yarn over. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into that pinch chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one. Pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through both loops. Go into that pinch chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one. Pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into that same chain that I pinched, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into that same pinch chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two back into that same pinch chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two. So now we need to count. So here's that beginning of that chain we began in. So I have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine. So I'll go back and that's that pinch chain right there. I'm going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through two loops. So I have a total of 10. So now I'm going to dip back into that same chain and make one extended single crochet. So yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, pull through both loops. So now I'm at the end. So if you remember, when we began, we began with two single crochets and then the third chain was the braid. So that's two. So we will end with eight chains left. So we will have eight single crochets. So when you uh, so if you are to fold it, it will be ten single crochets in between each braid. And remember, I'm on, I'm only doing the the um, small swatch, so yours will be a lot bigger, like the one I showed in the beginning of the video. So I should have eight chains left. So we'll go into that next chain, and we're just going to make a regular single crochet. So that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. That's six. That's seven. And then there's my last chain with my stitch marker in it. So in that very last chain, we'll make our last single crochet, which is our eighth single crochet. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to put my stitch marker in the very first chain of row two. So in my very first chain here, of row two, I need to place a stitch marker. And you don't have to do this if you don't have trouble counting your rows. This will help if you do. So that way, when we chain one and we turn and we work back, you'll know that that it will be your last stitch. So we made our braid. So now we are going to make four single crochet rows in between each uh, braid row. So now we made our braid row with our braids. So now we will go back and forth for a total of four rows. And then the fifth row, we will make our, our braids again. So we will always chain one and turn. So always a chain one for our turning chain. So remember, we ended on eight single crochets. And then one chain for the braid, 10 single crochets, then one chain for the braid, 10 single crochets, then one chain for the braid, and then two single crochets. So that means we will need eight single crochets. So in the same chain here, we will make one 
single crochet. Next chain, one single crochet. Next chain, one single crochet. So that's three. One, two, three. That's four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. And as you'll see, so we made our eight. And you'll see here, you'll see that one extended single crochet that kind of lays diagonal coming out of that chain. That's where we, we went into that chain. We made our 10 extended single crochets. And then we made one more extended single crochet in that same chain. And then we began our regular single crochets. So you'll see, you'll see that one extended single crochet and, and then our braid. So all of that is made in one chain. So now we only need one single crochet to go into that one chain to make our perfect stitch count. So this, this is our front, this third row here. We are looking at the front of our work. So we are going to lay our braid forward. So we're at the front of our work. It's time to make a single crochet in that chain that that braid is in. So we need to fold that chain forward. We're going to spread that braid and look for that hole. That is the hole, that is the chain that we made our braid in. So now we're going to go into that and we're just going to make one single crochet. And we're just going to scooch that braid over. And there's our next stitch right here. This is our next stitch. That is, so we'll have 10 single crochet. So that's our first single crochet. So we will go into that first single crochet and make a single crochet. So that's one. Go into the next chain. And that's two. Go into the next chain. That's three. Go into the next chain. That's four. Go into the next chain. That's five. Go into the next chain. That's six. Go into the next chain. That's seven. Go into the next chain. That's eight. Grab some yarn slack here. So we left off on the eight. Next chain. That's nine. Next chain is ten. There's the next chain. And that's our tenth single crochet. And then you'll see that one extended single crochet laying diagonal all in that same chain here with the braid. So now we will fold our braid forward, pull it apart. We see that hole. We're going to go into that hole. That's that chain that that whole braid is made into. We'll make one single crochet. And then we'll just push this over and we'll just stretch this out. 
and there's there's our first stitch right there there's our first single crochet so we go into that chain and make one single crochet and that begins our count again so that's one that's two that's three That's four. That's five. That's six. That's seven. That's eight. That's nine. Our next one and that's 10 so this next one here that's 10 and then if you spread everything you'll see that extended single crochet that's laying diagonal and then you got your braid there we go. so you just kind of spread everything apart so there's our chain right there that we need to go into now so we fold it down forward we go into that chain that hole right there and make our one single crochet so now we're at the end here so we began with eight single crochets so that means we will end with two single crochets for a total of 10. So now we will spread this apart. You'll see that single crochet right there. It looks like an upside down V with a knot at the top of it. Can you see that? That is what that back of that single crochet looks like so this is this is our stitch right here so I want to go into that stitch and make one single crochet and then here's my my last my last stitch so we need two single crochets at the end so far so good and there we go we got our two single crochets so we just did one row after the braid so now we need to do three more rows and then that next row will be another braid row so just remember after the braid row we'll have four rows of single crochets and then that fifth row will be a braid and then four rows of single crochets and then that fifth row will be a braid row So now we will chain one and we will turn. So now our braid, we're looking at the back of our work now because our braid, our braid is laying in the front. Our braid's laying in the front here. So now we're at the back of our work. So we're going to prepare to crochet. And this is very easy. You already see your chains. We're just going to single crochet all the way across. Super easy. So this is row four. So we're going to go into that same chain here. So we're going to that same chain. And we're just going to make one single crochet. Each chain will be one single crochet. Very easy and take your time with this everything will be okay if you think about it it's not that hard so you know that you have 10 single crochets in between each braid 
and at the ends, on one end you might have two, and at the other end you might have eight. Or at one end you might have eight, and at the other end you might have two. And you know how to make the braid. You just make those extended single crochets. Everything will be fine. So we are just single crocheting all the way across. And, and just think about how beautiful this is going to look. This is going to look so good. It's going to look so unique. It's going to look so good. Like you're not going to find this anywhere else. I'm pretty sure I'm the first one that has made a Jacob's Ladder pumpkin. So just think about that. Just think. You are going to be the first one to have a Jacob's Ladder pumpkin. Handmade, that you made yourself, and it's going to look great. It's going to look better than good. It's going to look great. And you know what might help? is if you write everything down as we go. You know, just just write down your instructions. That'll make things easy for you. Just write the pattern down as we go. Jot it down on a piece of paper. That way, that is in your handwriting, and, and it'll help you remember. It'll help you to follow along. To get everything just right. Everything will be okay. I don't know why this has trouble focusing today. I don't know if it's the bright colors with the lighting or what, but my, my, camera is having difficulty today. It, it might be the bright colors, the contrast of it, you know, the bright contrast and saturation of the colors, because I got purple nails, purple yarn tail, bright orange. This is like a neon, almost like, well, it might not, it's not neon, but it's pretty darn bright. So you will have the same exact stitch count as you began with in row one when you single crochet across. So we've made two rows of single crochets after that braid row. We need two more. So we will chain one like always and turn. Now we're at the front of our work. We're looking at our braids. Look how nice those look. After you single crocheted in the middle of that chain, look at that. It's nice. It's gonna look it's gonna look great. It's gonna look fantastic when you're done. So now we're just single crocheting across. Just all single crochets. So just continue making your single crochets in each chain all the way until the very last chain. And I will meet you back then. I wanted to show you how to count your rows. So this is our front. So here's our braids here in the front. And then here is our beginning yarn tail. 
So you'll see you have our foundation chain here at the bottom and our beginning yarn tail. So this is our front and what you will do is, so you see the braid here. Here's our braid. When you spread the braid, you'll see that hole, that's that beginning chain that we made with the braid. And then you see one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet. So that is how you will count your stitches. And you know that we did one row of single crochets and then row two was our braid row. And then right here, you'll see that single crochet that we made in the middle of that chain of that braid. So that's row three. And then kind of at an angle, they kind of go at an angle like this. So that's row three, row four, row five. So we made three rows of single crochets after the braid row. So now we need to make one more row of single crochets and then the very next row will be our braid row. So we will chain one and we will turn So we need one more row of single crochets across. So we'll go in, we'll make our first single crochet. And we're just gonna single crochet across like the previous row. And just do that all the way across. So four rows of single crochets in between each row that we make the braid. And you'll do that all the way across. So we just finished our four rows of single crochets after that braid row. We will chain one and turn. So now we are on row, we are on row seven. So what we will do now is we will make eight single crochets. And then in the ninth, we will make our braid. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, And eight. In the ninth, we will make our braid. So we will go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and we made that chain. So we're going to pinch it and then yarn over and pull through two. And that's one extended single crochet. So now we'll go back into the chain that we created that we pinched. And we will do it again. Pull up a loop, chain one, pinch that braid, yarn over, pull through two. So that's two extended single crochets and we will just repeat.
I made one too many. There we go. So now I have 10. So I want to go back into that same chain. I'm just going to pinch here on that loop, bend down, yarn over, pull up a loop, and just turn turn this. So I see my two loops, yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain, yarn over, and pull through both of those loops. And then now we will make 10 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I'm going to go back and count those ten single crochets. I feel like I may have missed one. So there's that chain. That's that extended single crochet. So we don't count that. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, I did that right. So that's ten single crochets. And that eleventh is our braid. So now I'm on my fifth one. So that's six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. I finished the ten, so I go back down to that same chain and make one extended single crochet and then I repeat the 10 single crochets that's two three four five six seven nine and ten so I have three chains left which is good so I'm doing it right so far 
So this next chain will be our braid, like that. And then we will have two single crochets at the end. So after this braid row, you know what to do. So we'll do it one more time. I'll show you one more time. I need some yarn slack. Pinch and then complete. Go back into that chain and do it again. Yarn over, pull through one, pinch that chain I made, and then yarn over and complete. Go back in. I'm so snagged that I don't like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So that's ten. I'm going to go back into that same chain, make that one extended single crochet. And then now make the two single crochets at the end. One and two. So we finished our braid row. So now we need four rows of single crochets. So we chain one and we turn. So we know we ended with two single crochets. So this time, well, here, let's do the, the two single crochets. We'll go into that same chain. We got one single crochet, next chain. Two single crochets. So now we're at the back of our work. And here's our braid. Last time we folded our braid forward and we single crocheted in. But we need our braids to be on the same side. So now we fold it backwards. So just remember, you want all your braids on the same side. So here's that hole that the braid is in. So we just pull it apart and look. So there's the hole that the, that the braid was made in, the chain. So we fold it down. Now we go into that chain and make one single crochet. So now we look, we look at our braid here. There's our braid. 
there's our single crochet. Not this chain, but this chain. So you'll see that, so this is the back of the single crochet. So you'll see like an upside down split open V. So you see that, and then you see like it looks like a knot, a loop on top of that V, you see? That is our single crochet. But our chain for that single crochet is right here. Do you see? So we're gonna go in right here. Oops, let me write that up again. That's our chain for our single crochet, right? Right here. So we're gonna go into that with our braid down backwards and we'll single crochet. So that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. Six, seven, eight. We want to fold that braid backwards, so it's eight. Oh, come on, focus now. So that's our eighth one, ninth, tenth. There's our 10th one, so now it's time to make the single crochet in the chain that the braid is made in. So there's our, our chain, so we're going to fold this braid backwards. We're going to go into that chain and make that single crochet. There's our single crochet, and this is our chain right here. So we're going to go into that chain and make a single crochet. And that is what you will do. Those are the steps you will take to make this entire thing. So you can make this as tall as you want or you can make it the same size that I'm making. That way you'll have a really nice big pretty crocheted fabric pumpkin and I promise you no one else has made a Jacob's Ladder pumpkin so this is definitely one of a kind here so let's see I got one more it'll be my tenth Fold that backwards. I'm going to go right in into that right there. And sometimes it's good to go back and count. You know, sometimes, sometimes I make mistakes and sometimes I have to go back and count. As long as you, you know, um, keep counting, then you'll be fine. You always got to keep track of your count. So here's my single crochet. I'll go in. And that's, that's one. Oh, and here I am at the end. So now I will have eight single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. And chain one and turn, of course. So there you go. So you just made one row of single crochets after your braid. So that means I have three more rows of single crochets. And then that fourth row, I'll, I will make a braid. 
and I basically will be doing what I did on the first braid. So you're alternating what you're doing on your braids. But just remember, as long as you do your count and your braid and your 10 and your braid and your 10 and then whatever you have left at the end and then your four single crochet rows in between each braid row. And as long as you make sure you, you fold over your braids all on the same side, then you're good. That, that's it. That, that is it. That's all you have to do. Um, so, um, my large pumpkin that I am making, let's see, I made it until, let's see. So, um, on your very last braid, you will make your last braid on row 37. And then you will do, let's say you'll do one, two, three, four rows of single crochets after your very last braid. And then that next row, which is row 42, I will show you how to lock in your braids. So I will show you how to interlock your braids and then how to lock in your braids. So you will work this up until, let's see, 42, 43. So 43 rows total. You will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chains. So we'll have a total of eight chains. All together your last chain and you might want to write it down your last chain row will be 37 row 37 then you will make four rows of your single crochets after that last braid and then the following row we will lock in our braid so we will interlock these together to create this chain link and then we will lock that in so I'm gonna go ahead and take apart a few rows and I will show you how to lock in your braid so after you make your eight braids and you make your see let's spread that apart so you got one two three four so you'll make your eighth braid and then your four rows of single crochets. So after you do that, this is what your piece will look like. All your braids will be on one side. And then your back side will, will look like this. And what we will do to interlock our braids as we start at the very bottom on our first braids. So what we will do is we will take our second braid and we will put it inside our first one and then pull it up. We'll take the braid above that, go inside that braid and then pull it up. So the one above it goes in the one below. Just like that. We'll do the same thing here. Go to the second one, put it in the first one. Third one, put it in that second one. Fourth one, and that third one. Fifth one, and that fourth one. Sixth braid, and the fifth braid. Seventh braid, and the sixth braid. 8th braid, and the 7th braid. And there we go. 
our interlocking chain line. So now we are ready to lock in our braids because we don't want them just floating out like that. We want it to be uh, locked in. So I unlocked all of these so none of these are locked in. So now we will turn our work. We will take our hook, our braids are back here, so I want you to look, so this side here is the side that has two single crochets then the braid, so I know that I will single crochet in the first chain, in the second chain, and then in the third chain would be my braid. So, this is row, I believe this is, um, so we are locking in our braid, so I am on row 42. So, row 42 here, so I know I got two single crochets and then my braid, so one, and then two, so it's my braid. You can either choose to lock into the top chain or the bottom chain. So you see you got you got two chains here, one at the bottom, one at the top. And it's up to you what you want to do. So you can go into the top chain and make a single crochet. Or You can go into the bottom. I like the bottom of the chain better down here. So I can go in on this one or this one. It's up to you, whichever one you want to do. So I'm going in the bottom of that chain. So I'm skipping this chain here and then going into the next. So that's one single crochet. So I know I got 10 single crochets until my next braid. So that's one. That's two. That's three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so now the next chains are braid. So we go so here's our braid right here. So I'm just gonna pull this braid up and I'm just gonna go into that bottom of what seems like the top very top of that braid and then I'm just going to pull it through and make a single crochet and I'm going to skip this chain and I'm going to go into the next and then begin my count again so that's one two oops three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then do the same thing. So I made my ten. So I know this next chain would be my braid. So I'm going to pull my braid up. I'm going to pull it up and then decide which seems like the highest. So I'm just going to go into that bottom part of that braid, yarn over, and pull it through, make that single crochet, skip that next chain, and then go into the next and begin my count again. 
and that's all you have to do. And then that's what it looks like. And it's locked in, so it won't be floating or hanging anymore. After you complete this row, you will make one more row of single crochets, and then I will show you what to do after that. All right, friends, so take a look at your work. We just finished locking in our braids on row 42. So row 43, I just want to do one single crochet in each chain across. Oops, I forgot to chain one for my turning chain. Yeah, so row 43, we're almost done. So I just want to do one single crochet all the way across. Oops, sorry. I'm doing this because we we locked in our braid here. Just wanted it to look nicer. And then um, it's up to you if you want this to be your last row. Uh, I kind of want to um, do some decreases to shrink up the top of our pumpkin before we uh, cinch it closed. So um, um, it's up to you if you want to do that. You don't have to. But um, after we finish single crocheting across till the end, just decide if you want this to be the top of your pumpkin where you locked in your braid, or maybe you want this to be the top of your pumpkin. So just picture it. So just picture it going around and being closed up. You know, maybe you want the top of your pumpkin to have the braids going uh, down this way. It might look better. Or maybe you want the top of your pumpkin to have the braids like this. So it's totally up to you what you want to do. So just decide um, which um, if you want um, this to be your top or this to be your top and then we'll go from there and if you want to decrease on your um, last row for your top just to kind of um, make it smaller um, I think that it will help when we cinch it closed I think it will help to make it look um, like a better cleaner a cinch but that's totally up to you if you want to do that or not so I'm just going to finish up this row uh, 43 and I will meet you back when I'm done so the next step is and, and this is totally up to you if you want to do this or not but this next row will be my last row and I am going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work around and I am just going to do some decreases just to kind of um, tighten up the top of my pumpkin. So I'm going to go into the first chain and single crochet. I'm going to go into the next chain and single crochet. And then in the next two chains, I'm going to make a single crochet two together. So I'm going to go into that chain. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. I'm going to go into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. 
and I'm going to repeat this all the way across. So next chain, single crochet, next chain, single crochet, next two chains, I'm going to single crochet two together. Next chain, single crochet, next chain, single crochet, next two chains, single crochet, two together. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way across until the end. And then this will kind of close this up more, kind of like this. And that should help us uh, with uh, cinching up our pumpkin. So just finish that, and I will meet you back at the end. And um, also, um, I decided I'm going to go ahead and do one more row of decreases just to kind of pull the pumpkin in a little bit more. So I was thinking about uh, doing the same thing. But just starting off with the decrease and then doing the two single crochets and then a decrease because the the less stitches that we have at the top when we cinch this the better actually so i'm just going to try to get this I'm going to try to use some tighter tension too. Just try to get this shrunk up the best that I can. So see it's already it's already pulling really nicely now. So when we cinch it up, it'll have, I, I think this will help. I think this will definitely, definitely help when we, when we go to close our pumpkin. And I'm just trying to do this with some, some tight tension. So I'm just doing two single crochets and then the single crochet two together so yeah if you look at that so far it's definitely definitely curving in nicely you know, decrease in those so far so good and then we're going to after this step we are going to thread our yarn needle and then we're gonna stitch our sides together and then that's when we're gonna cinch the um, um, the you know the bottom and then fill it and then cinch the top so yeah, so just finish that up, and then we're going to uh, fold our sides together and work on filling up our pumpkin. Here we go. So the first two stitches will be um, the first two the first two stitches will have the uh, decrease and the last two stitches will have the decrease and then it'll kind of look a little roughly but once we fill it up it will be perfect it will it will it will. Okay, so now 
we are going to stitch our sides together. So here's here's our panel. So I am folding it like this. So I got the inside facing me and I'm just going to fold this together. And the reason why I I decided to have the the end so close to the braid is because when we sew this together it's going to show a seam and i was kind of hoping that we could that if i made the pattern like this that we can stitch it real close under the braid that way it it won't be seen so um we're going to need our yarn needle and our scissors so we're going to want a long enough strand to seam our pumpkin together and um, when I developed this pattern I didn't think about it but I end up making my beginning yarn tail really short like I would any other project but um, at the beginning of the video um, I told you all that it's best to have a really long yarn tail to cinch this up so what I'm gonna do is this um, what I'm gonna stitch with is gonna be a lot longer because I'm gonna have to use it to close up the bottom of my pumpkin so I just wanted you all to know that so what we want to do though is we want our yarn tail to be about three times the length of what we're sewing just in case and then I'm just gonna add um, extra to sew up the bottom of my pumpkin so my mine is gonna be pretty long and then this this loop here, I'm just going to pull my yarn tail through that to bind that off. And now I'm going to thread my yarn needle. So I have this little wire that I made and I just folded it in half and then twisted it up. This helps me to get thick yarn in through my uh, yarn needle. And this yarn needle, um, is, it's a need a long one for this big pumpkin. And it's pretty small, but this will work. So that always helps. So now, we are going to close the side of our pumpkin. So we're just going to go in to the first stitch on the opposite side. And I'm just going to go in through that and pull this tight. And I can either stitch along the sides or I can go further in under the braid. Going up real close to the braid might help better. I'm going to go in and around and zoom in to show you all. So I'm going to go in and around those stitches right there on the edge. I'm going to pull that tight. And now I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to do the same thing. And then pull that tight. And then I'm going to repeat this. So I'm going to go to the opposite side. 
I want to go in and under the stitches of the rows. it snug or you can do it loose and then after you get so far pull it tight and I'll show you how to do that too so I'm just going to go back and forth Oops. so I didn't pull it tight I have it loose I'm going to go into the next one across into the next one and then into the next one and then on the other side and I'm just going to do this a few more times And I will pull it tight. Okay, so those are pretty loose. So now I'm just going to pinch right here. And then I'm going to pull this tight and it's going to cinch it closed nice and tightly and then I'm gonna repeat so I'm over here so I want to go back over here And then I'm going to do that again. So I'm just going to pinch where I left off and then pull it tight and let it all pull together. You have a really nice seam that's pretty unnoticeable. So just repeat that going all the way down until you reach the very last stitches on each row I will meet you back at the end and then we will work on the next step of the pumpkin so at the end here I went through my last stitch so I went in and then I pulled it and now I have a loop and now I'm just gonna go in from behind I'm going to pull it and create a knot and I can do that again and don't pull it all the way through create a knot and then your long uh, yarn the end that you began with with your foundation chain you can use to stitch up the edge of the bottom of your pumpkin but I want you to take a look 
um, I know I made a few mistakes towards like the beginning. I, I was doing really good. And then I started noticing that it was a little off, like one side was longer than the other. So I kind of screwed up like right here. But other than that, uh, it doesn't look too bad. And it's not really noticeable because of it's so close under that braid. And that's why it, it began with two and then ended with eight on the, on the stitch count. Um, and then our top is already kind of cinched in a little. So now we just need to close the bottom of our uh, pumpkin. And that's what the inside of that seam looks like. So you definitely want that to be inside the pumpkin. So, what we could do, though, is we could turn this inside out and stitch this closed. So, turn your work inside out. So, the, or out, uh, so the out, the inside is out. And then we are going to stitch up the bottom of our pumpkin. So I'm using the same yarn tail I have. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in every few stitches. So we're right here. So we're going to go one, two, three. Actually, we're going to go like this and go one, two, and then on the two and the three, we're just going to go in like that. Instead of going in like this, we go in like that, go one, two, like that, one, two, that, one, two. One, two, one, two, and the three, one, two. It's going in the two and the three. Go in the two and out the three. In the two, out the three. One, two, and out three. I want to do this all the way around. That top, that top edge. We're going to want to pull pretty tight. I'm 
we still have a little bit of a hole here but that's fine we're gonna close this up So we're just going to continue I want to see what this looks like on the inside okay so far so far the inside looks good so that's what we want And then we're just going to go straight across and stitch. I'm going to go straight across, so in and out, across to the other side. Because this is going to be a big pumpkin. We want the outside to look good and the inside to, to look the messy part. I'm just going all the way around. It looks pretty closed up to me. So uh, for you all, you all would just need to create a knot. So go in, pull a loop, and do just like that. Pull it tight. I'm just going to take these two yarn ends and tie them together. That's all going to hold up really well. Just in case, we're going to leave this, uh, this yarn tail here. We're going to stick it out through the other side. So we're going to take it, find our middle. Pull that. Okay. Now turn this inside out. And there's our bottom here. There's that, oops, there's that yarn tail. So now all we need to do is stuff our pumpkin. So go ahead and grab your stuffing. I'll meet you, I'll meet you back in a moment. All right, so now just grab like a ton of stuffing. And then stuff your pumpkin. I'm just really going to take off my ring. Going to need to work your stuffing around. Try to work it around. All the way around in the circle. 
make sure you try to get all the gaps this is going to be a very big pumpkin so far that's what it's looking like it's going to be a pretty big pumpkin but it's going to look so good And I'm just trying to kind of tear it apart, just spread it, fill it really well. And just keep stuffing, just keep working it, keep spreading it, keep stuffing it. And it's up to you if you want to just have it completely stuffed without creating um, the swells. But being that this is a very large pumpkin, we might not be able to create the swells. Um, but it's still going to look very nice with the braided textures. I'm just trying to push as much of the cotton I can on the outsides here. And this polyfill here, this is some really thick stuff. This is much thicker, much thicker. This seems like a way better quality than the Hobby Lobby stuff. Wow, look at this pumpkin. It is really looking like a pumpkin. Wow, so cool. So cool. Wow, look at that. Wow. Yeah, this stuff is way thicker, way better quality. You all should definitely use this stuff. Goodness, this I got this at Walmart. And it and it's the Polyfill brand. Polyfill Crafters Choice Dry Polyester Packaging Fiber Fill. It's got a little doll on it. Five dollars and sixty-nine cents at Walmart. For 20 ounces like look at that I still got I still got a whole bag like look I just and I stuffed all like this stuff oh my goodness goes a long way I, I think I'm always gonna buy this product oh my goodness this was way better quality look at this I could actually cinch this up and probably not even fill the inside and it will still do great way better than the Hobby Lobby brand way better like look at Oh my goodness. It was only five dollars. And it doesn't even look like I've even I gotta show you all. After I do this, I gotta show you all. It doesn't even look like I've taken any out of the bag. Wow. Man, this is an awesome looking pumpkin. Look at that. I'm kind of wondering if I should stuff the middle with the yarn. like I did like I did this one because this one I was able to like mold it 
by doing that, which this would be a little different because it's so big, but look at that so far. Like, wow. But actually, yarn costs more. Yarn costs more. This stuff was only $5. It doesn't look like I touched it. Like, my whole bag is still plump full. Like, this stuff. So, I might as well. I might as well use this because yarn. Yarn costs more. Look at that. Man, my mom is going to love this bag. It looks like a big pumpkin. That's so cool. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, I get excited when, when my projects come out. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> She's going to love it. Okay, the flower. The flower. So, my plan is I'm going to stick this flower I need to create a hole. I'm going to cinch it closed with the flower in it. I'm going to use this real pumpkin stem. Okay, so now we need some yarn. So I'm just going to push this to the side. Oh my goodness. This is a jumbo pumpkin. This is awesome. Okay, so we're going to need a new yarn tail to cinch the top closed. And, oh goodness, I don't know. Let's see. We need it to be pretty long, right? So let's go from, from tips to elbow, tips to elbow, tips to elbow. That should be about... 12, 12, and 12, so that's 36, uh, 36 inches, 36 inches should be enough. And if you got that hot glue gun, I would definitely use that uh, to glue on your stem, but if you don't, use whatever you got. Use super glue. Um, I'm going to use, uh, I got two different kinds. I got Gorilla Clear Grip. And I also got, uh, I got the E6000 Plus, but to be honest with you, if I had the fast drying liquid super glue, that's what I would use. Um, first choice I would use is hot glue gun with glue. Second choice, I would use um, the fast drying super glue. And third choice would be would be this, but this is all I got, so that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna thread my yarn needle. Ooh, I'm excited! Oh my gosh, this looks cool.
a more jumbo pumpkin. So just choose any spot to go into. Actually, let's let's create a knot. Oops. Actually, no. We're gonna leave. We're gonna leave this strand hanging out. We're gonna pull them both, and then cinch it closed, and then glue the stem on there and any acorns or leaves you got. So let's see. We'll go. Um, we'll do the same thing. So we're gonna go in the second. And out through third. Or you can do in the third and out the fourth, you know, whichever whichever you think will work best. So technically you don't need a really long yarn needle if you're not going to go in and out to squeeze it closed around the sides. So technically if you're just uh, closing up the bottom and the top and that's it, then technically you don't need, you don't need a long yarn needle. Okay, let's pull it tight. And the plan would be to glue that on there like that. Okay, pinch that with your finger and your thumb. We're going to take the threaded part and we're going to we're going to pull it tight as tight as we can. We're going to pinch it and then we're going to sew we're going to try to sew this together. So have a loop here. I'm going to put this 
other yarn strand through that loop. Twice. And then pull this one down so that'll hold that that'll ha that'll hold that closed and you don't have to put your flower in yours that's just what I chose to do and now we're going to sew this kind of like an X and going across we're going to try to close this up the best we can unless you want to put your stem in there too and close it up around your stem you could do that if you wanted or just close it all up stitching it closed and then glue on your your stem okay so now i just gotta stitch it up so we'll go in And then we're just going to go across. And now I want to go through the opposite side. Pulling these leaves out. Here we go. And through opposite side. Try to move that flower out for you. And I went into the other side, and now I'm just going to squeeze it closed. Probably would have been easier to do this without the flower in it, but that's just the idea that I had to do it with the flower in it. I just thought that that would look better. I know my mom, she likes sunflowers. And then with that sunflower and that stem glued on there and it's got leaves, I think this will look very, very promising. So now, squeeze tightly. I just need to put just a few more stitches in it. Just a few. Be careful using these doll needles because it's sharp. It is sharp at the end. But really, you could have just used regular 
and I'll put that at the beginning of the video. I'll type that on there. That way everyone knows they don't have to use an extra large, long yarn needle. And then what I think would be a good idea is just go around in a circle. And it cinch it. around the edges you know however you want to do it this is my first time ever closing an, an extra extra large a pumpkin first time I've made them half this size but not quite this large this is nice this is big this is as big as a real pumpkin all right so the next idea I have you don't have to do this uh, but this is what I want to try to do I want to try to go through the center and out the bottom which really it's all kind of all packed in really good actually so really it's compacted really good I stuffed it really good so really I don't need to do that all right so let's go ahead and, and be done let's go ahead and as long as you over pack this especially with that that original polyfill so this is the bottom this is the sides and that is it it is really nice she's gonna really like this so I am going to just tie these yarn tails tie it tight create another knot there we go and you can always leave that if you want to make a bow if you want so now I got the flower I got the leaves there's this stem I got this this pumpkin stem which is nice or this this great big one here this great big one might might look better. And if you got hot glue, just hot glue it on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to find my hot glue gun, but I don't know where it is. The only thing I can think of is just use use the glue that I have. There we go. And thank you all for watching. I hope you all make you a pumpkin like this and sit it on your porch or sit it on your rocking chair, sit it on your couch, um, sit it on your steps outside on your porch. Like there's all kinds of really good ideas where you could put your pumpkin or sit it right outside your door. 
Um, it'll look great wherever you put it. You can always make one and gift it for a family member or make one for yourself. And um, don't forget to um, hit the thumbs up and hit the like button. And don't forget to uh, comment below. And right below this video is a bell. If you hit that bell, then you will subscribe for all notifications for all future videos. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you. Bye-bye, you all. I wanted to give you all a look at the finished, the finished pumpkin here. And there we go. There's our sunflower, our stem and leaves. Yeah, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you all. Bye-bye.